Lisa. Hi, Alan. Welcome to my show. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So you brought a really beautiful painting with you today. Thank you. Yeah. Does it have a name, title? It's, uh, it's called Zabriskie Point. It's a painting of uh, Zabriskie Point, which is in Death Valley. And um, that's sort of part of my park series that I've done. Uh, I've been a national park artist for the last several years. And um, I had more to do of that area, but this one came from a show I did um, at Woodside Brasseth several, oh gosh, I guess it's been like four or five years ago during the centennial of national parks. Nice. Yeah. So you and your husband travel around and? Uh, well, we do a lot of traveling. Um, I also travel by myself a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I've been uh, uh, artist in residence in three national parks. Nice. In Grand Canyon and in Zion National Park and Capitol Reef. Where when you do that, you actually get to live there for a month in a house or a cabin and you become um, an ambassador for the park. You're actually a designated ranger. So I get to a little outfit I get to wear. Fun. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Yeah. yeah. I don't have to wear it, but um, I do, you know, talks in the park. And then the rest of the time I'm spending either hiking or painting, wow. which is really fabulous. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah. Thanks. So, how did you? It, it seems like you have a really uh, identifiable style and um, you have a really, I've always appreciated your lovely brushwork. Uh, how did, how did you, what, did that come naturally or? You know, um, I, I don't know why I'm attracted to doing landscapes, but it just is something I've been doing for, I don't know, 20 years, 30 years maybe. Um, I didn't really take being a, an artist as a serious thing until about 20 years ago. And I went to school, I got a visual communications degree, uh, went into graphic design, television production, doing stuff like this. Um, and then I, uh, I came back around and I started practicing my, my art again. I've taken art classes. I have, like I said, I have a visual communications degree, but I'm not a fine arts degree person. Though I've taken painting and, and all the different courses, I had never taken oil painting before. So I didn't know what I was doing at all when I started oil painting. Sure. But I, I did start working in uh, soft pastels. And that's where I really learned how to blend color and understanding that pastel builds on itself, you know, by the layers. And then there's there's a trick to, you know, based on the type of pastel, the type of paper you use. Once you lose the tooth, the pastel no longer stays on the paper. So it's about where do you find that marriage of color? You know, you don't just put yellow on. I want a certain yellow. I put a yellow on, then it may be a blue, you know, cross hatching it or doing something that makes that. Um, glazing effect where you see different colors through the, the layers and and so that was very helpful in becoming an oil painter um, and when I became an oil painter I had worked in acrylics before which I think is a totally different uh, animal <laughs> so to speak but oils I didn't know what to do so I my first few were real disasters <laughs> I put in I put, oh, I'll put some neomegalip and then I'll put some linseed oil in and and then I just one day I, I met a woman who was um, uh, she fixed paintings at you know museums in LA and such and she said you know just be a purist you know we like pure things so all I use is thinner which in my is a mineral spirit is my thinner and that's my first layer and then I build up into my thick painting of where I might be just pure paint. And fat then, over lean. Yeah, mm, fat over lean. And then my last layers start getting mixed in with some linseed oil. I actually do not varnish my paintings because I never have time to varnish. You mm -hmm. really need a year or two really to safely varnish, mm -hmm. uh, especially with layers because they're just still drying. It's mm -hmm. It's pretty amazing how slow the process can be. It might be dry to the touch, but it's not dried really mm -hmm. seriously for cured, like a year. Cured, 100%. Yeah, it's not cured. Um, so um, sometimes I'll do an oil out. Do you know what that is? No, tell me what an oil uh, out, out means. It's, um, it's, you know, I paint on wood. Let me back up here a little bit. And, and one of the reasons I paint on wood, and I, I do a gesso that's white in the background. And the reason I like that is because the lights reflect off that board a little differently uh -huh. than it does on linen or canvas. And I just really like that, that hardness and that, that reflective ability that it gives off. So I just sew a board and then um, I lay the paint on it. You know, sometimes it's just dry and it's not, it, it's not really dry for 
ever. Like in a year, I'll come back and I'll see a painting and it'll look velvety. It'll be a completely different thing. And I know where it's going, but I can't accelerate that without you know, doing some weird stuff to the process. So one of the things people do is we do this thing called oiling out and you take it's in, I will use something like a neomeglip or a linseed oil as one 50% uh, substance and the other substance would be a uh, thinner. And then you mix it together and I never leave it on more than two minutes, actually one minute. It's the most stressful thing you can do to a painting. And I lay it on with some foamy. I'll do like a section and I have, you know, dried, um, you know, rags that don't have any lint in them at, any, at all. And after I lay them on, I have a timer going on and I start just lightly taking it off. Some colors like greens and stuff, I realize they really don't dry <laughs> for like two years. And I'm, so I don't ever want to take paint off, but I, I just get the glisten, but I don't leave it on. And what happens is it goes that that um, thinner goes into the paint layers and it kind of pulls the oils back out. Mm -hmm. That's why they call it oiling out. And then it gives the painting that kind of strong um, balance of oil. You know, some people use a lot of oil and it's really oily. Have you ever mm -hmm. seen paintings like that? Sure. You know, get crackle and weird stuff. And I don't, I use oil, but I'm very conservative about how I use it because I know eventually it'll come forth and I don't want to ever have that sheeny look to my work mm -hmm. and I don't want it to be too dry. So if I get done with a painting based on maybe the pigments I'm using that choose to be drier than other pigments, then sometimes I'm like, eh, before it goes to the gallery, I think I might oil that one out. So I'll, I'll let it sit about two or three months and then I'll oil it. Yeah. How oh, nice. Yeah. I, I like hearing about that. Yeah. So do you have particular uh, oil brands that you prefer? Or oh, is yeah. There, yeah. I, you know, which I think ones? You're, you're only as good as your material. So, um, I actually prefer Williamsburg, which is pretty pricey, and uh, Michael Harding's. Those are probably my favorite two brands. You know, I'll, I'll dabble and grab a Gamlin or something, but I sure I really like deep pigment, and those brands have it. And you know, I don't go through as much paint as people think I do. Mm -hmm. You know, it's pretty amazing. You know, you buy a little tube of paint sometimes. Like one of my favorite colors is a, I think it's a Michael Harding. Is it called Cobalt Teal? It's like 60 bucks a tube or something. Yep. It's ridiculously expensive, but it's made out of cobalt, which explains why it's like that. Mm -hmm. And I've tried to make it, and I can't get that. And I never use a straight color anyway. I'm always mixing my colors. But that color, just it just has this color, especially when I'm doing things like um, icebergs or, or glacial paintings mm -hmm. or glacial water. It really just screams at you, you know. So I really like that, but um, I'll have that too for a year, you know. Because I was like, just a little dab, it goes a long way. Sure. Yeah. What about color? Do you have a <clears throat> philosophy on how you apply yeah. the balance of color, warm yeah. and cools and dark and light? It, you know, it's really funny is I think, I think all artists pick a palette that they work with. And, you know, if you came and looked at my table, you'll see 30 different colors on my table. But usually I'm, I'm working with maybe 10 only you know and uh, and I'll I pick the basics like you do you know your palette but my palette is not the the normal palette of you know a certain blue I might have or I don't have black in my palette I have pain gray you know I like a bluish gray to it for example and then I have the same color so I can paint Death Valley I can paint Alaska and I'll always have the sort same palette of colors that I'm using through that maybe there's one color that I don't use that I might use in something else like um, I, I do a lot of paintings of uh, uh, eastern Idaho and, and of that area. I guess it's a yellow, and there would be actually a little bit of it in here. And I might use, like, a particular orange that's, like, so intense. And, you know, again, I only use a little bit of it. But I would never use it in maybe another palette from another region. So, And people always say, look at my work, and they're like, I know where that is, based on the palette, which is it's extremely flattering. I'm yeah. like, oh, I got it, you know. You really you nailed that. Yeah, I nailed it, even though it's really not true, you know. <laughs> I mean, this isn't exactly how Zabriskie Point looks, but people look at it and go, oh, that's Zabriskie Point. I'm like, wow, because I didn't just take a standard picture of Zabriskie, which is what I do. I photograph. You take a picture first and then paint from yeah, the photo? Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm a big hiker and backcountry person. This one, you know, it's pretty easy to get from the car, but... Um, yeah, I go in the backcountry with my camera and I shoot things. That's my first process. It's just actually 
finding the image. What's the image? I, I, I know what I'm looking for when I go out there and how I'm going to frame it. And, you know, I have, you know, 20,000 photos on iCloud. <laughs> you know, I have to go through and go, I want to paint that. And, and I just kind of come home and figure out what's going to hit me for that image. And I've got it down to the point where I know what size board is going to work best with certain images. You know, you can't put a really large, well, you can, but you, you don't want to maybe put a really large image on a little board, you know, and then maybe I'll actually put a more um, uh, intense little corner of something on a smaller board, you know, that's sort of my signature style and how I pick my imagery. Yeah. And you have like such a beautiful, lovely, the way you, it's it's soft and but it's it's very abstracted too. It's yeah, thanks. The way you have um, almost simplified mm -hmm. the natural. Tell me about that. How do you come? Well, and I heard Jojo Keefe say this one time. You were asking me about it earlier, and I and I heard her say I paint shapes, and I'm like I do too. I I don't do it because she does. I just that's how I see things. I think so. Actually, even when I'm photographing, I'm looking and going, oh, that's an interesting shape, and then I, I take a photo of it. So, um, you know, there's some interesting shapes here. And so when I look at the photo, I mean, again, I've skewed it. It's abstract. It doesn't really look like that. But I pick a shape. Uh, my first layer is, you know, I can't honestly tell you how I did this because I can't remember. But sometimes I'll go in and maybe just do a, a monotone first layer of color. Like I'm working on a painting right now, and it's, it's pretty much 90% pain gray as my background. There's a lot of, of that blue in the painting already. Uh, and then sometimes I'll pick something and I'll, I'll pick it and say, this is gonna be red. And so that might've been a different red in the beginning. And then I started, you know, filling in maybe the darker spots and kind of sketching, you know, my background out. And then I start to fill color and then I come back after it dries and I fill the next color to make the next color. So I'm building like I talked about in pastels and I, I don't even know how I would teach that. <laughs> so, you know, where some, like say Renaissance painters would just have that, you know, dark umber background and then they would put the color on top. Sometimes I actually have mixed color on my first layer and there's multiple colors going on. And then I build on top of that. So you might start kind of with a middle gray and work the highlights and the, and the, mm -hmm. and the deep tones from yeah, there. Yeah, sometimes I'm just working in, like I, I just worked in a, a red orange you know and mm -hmm. worked on top of that i do probably work more light on top of dark for sure yeah. because it still has a real fresh you, you, it's opaque enough to where really and yet i think you know you can see some underpainting yeah. coming shining there's through probably there's probably five layers on there you know i'm some i'm somewhere between Four, three, four to seven, eight layers, depending on the painting and what I'm trying to get. And, uh, and, and I'm, I'm at the point now where I know how to get there, which is really great. Because <laughs> that's where you fight for years, trying to figure out how am I going to get that. People ask me, how did you get that? I'm like, years <laughs> of figuring out how I was going to get to that effect or that blue. I mean, you can't quite see it up close, but you, you know looking at you can see there's a dark blue and there's a green and there's yellow and oranges there's a lot of color in there and how did I get there was like I had a plan so I, I do make a plan in my head of how I'm going to get there and sometimes I don't know how it's going to turn out until I get there but then I also I'm at a point in my career where I know how to fix it so I feel pretty you know solid and that feels good so I can't change mediums <laughs> I'll be totally lost <laughs> yeah so as, as free as it looks, you seem to have a real deliberate yeah. plan. Yeah, and so I do. I think, I, I think my sketching, you know, I've always been a strong sketching, uh, sketching artist. So I think my sketch is very hard and very defined and very shaped. And it's hard to paint on board. Have you ever painted on board? Sure. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really like to grab it like it does on a canvas. So there's a, uh, the first layer is always a struggle for me to make sure it actually just is there, you know? And then once I get that down, I get the shape down, then I get a little more like painterly where I like let it hang loose, you know, and, and really kind of let things flow. And if I get a little bit over the edge, that's okay. And then I do that for a few layers. And then I come back, it's that 
tweak in it at the end thing that I do. And I have a lot of edging in my work, as you've probably noticed. I mean, you can see I have very strong edging. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm going to do when I lose my eyesight when I get old because I'm down there literally with little brushes sometimes getting that edge. You'll never see, you know, a little gap in my edge. And it's because I planned that, mm -hmm. you know. So, so I actually think about that. Like, I'm like, I'm going to build this on top of this, on top of this. And, you know, everything's coming forward, right? So I start up and just plan, like, that edge is going to happen after I finish that background. That edge is going to happen after I finish that background. So that it creates this extra depth to my work, I think. But it's all about just being a complete um, compul obsessive compulsive. <laughs> type of personality and just pulling that forth. It, it really shows and it, it really um, has, a, has a real, um, well, abstracted and playful, um, but controlled. Yeah. Um, I, I like the definition of how shapes are really kind of playing on there. Yeah. And, and the balance between the, the you know, the, the subtle overlays of color and then the more um, you know, this, this hard edge mm -hmm. really stands up yeah. and, and when you, you almost look, you know, when you look close at this, you almost think, wow, that's pretty, pretty there, pretty, pretty strong. Yeah. Yeah. But then when you get back a little bit, yeah. it, it really, it blends well together. Yeah. You know, so you've really have, Thanks. have something magical. I think that. I had a friend who said, it's like you have a bunch of little paintings within a big painting. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I blew my eye out doing a painting for Seattle Art Fair a couple years ago. I, I'm literally like, I get stuck. Like I start a section and I, I go, today I'm going to do this. And this, um, this part of the painting and that's, if I get that done, it's great. And so I work pretty large. This is actually a fairly small painting of mine. My paintings tend to be like four by six foot or up to that size. I've done seven, eight foot paintings. Uh, this is a four by six painting. And I did a painting for the Seattle Art Fair. I think it was like a 40 by 60 or something, but... Uh, I was kind of crammed up to my deadlines. I was traveling, I was doing a bunch of stuff, and I really wanted to put this one painting. I had this idea for a painting for the fair, and I was about to go out of town, but I knew I had to get so far on it or I wasn't going to be able to do it. So I started doing the sky, and my skies are, can be really crazy. Not always, but they can be pretty wild. And this is a really wild sky. There's a lot of stuff going on, very um, unreal. <laughs> kind of Ed Mellish, I don't know who he is, or, or, you know, some of those, like, really strong, bold lines. Going sure. On. And, again, I'm doing the edging and the lines, and I'm getting crazy. But the sky was probably too fair time. Like, I just need to do the lay-in. But I had, like, two days, and I did it in, like, several hours, and I just was doing this, you know, just, just nonstop standing there. My husband's always like... How do you stand there for eight solid hours? You haven't moved. You've been in the same spot for eight <laughs> hours. I'm like, I don't know. And I did this thing for like eight, nine, ten hours. And I went to a trip. I came back and my eyes was just like totally screwed up. And uh -huh. I had actually caused an ulcer in my eye. from just staring right. so hard at my painting. And so, yeah. <laughs> that level of concentration and focus. Great. Yeah. So you just, you're your focus is just so um, yeah. well-developed, or do you think you've always, are you? Are you I'm you're, a Virgo, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's a, it's a curse in a weird way. Yeah. Why is it a curse? Because, because I blow my eyes out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you, you don't wear glasses or? I do when I work, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I yeah. have the glasses that work. I, you know, I have to have them for reading and I have to have like this far. I'm supposed to wear like tri-levels, but I'm like, I'm at the doctor, like, I need to do here, here, and here, you know. And he's like, well, what about driving? I'm like, don't get on the road when I'm driving. I'm kidding. I was heard that now. So where are, is there a particular place that you haven't been that you really want to get to that mm. really invites you to do some fun new I think work? More, more than anything, I just think I want to get to the, some, some of the stuff I haven't been able to do yet. Yeah. You know? I have the photographs that you've already taken. I love that. I have um, just a whole onslaught of paintings I want to do from Death Valley that are just, I just haven't had time to go there yet. And, you know, I've done these residencies in the Southwest and I have so many images. I'm just like itching to get out. But I'm a Northwest artist too. And I have a, a lot of things here I want to complete and do. And 
And I spent a lot of time doing a lot of work in Alaska. It was really... In the southeast yeah. or? Mostly Denali. Area. Yeah. Yeah, that was incredible. I, uh, I applied for a road permit you can get at the end of the season. And they're, I think they're pretty hard to get. Um, but I applied and I got it. <laughs> and you get to drive your car in all the way. And we went back into the... It's like the end of the season. Like you, you go all the way to Alaska and it can snow and they can close the park. And you'd be like, oh, well, that was a waste of money. But, you know, <laughs> went up there and, and got in and drove up. Then you can't even drive up the road and the road's been washed out, you know. So um, I got so many great images. That's that's like the craziest place ever. That's a national park on steroids. And I could say anything. Have you been there? I have not been there. But I've, of course, yeah. seen photographs. Yeah. And there's more stuff I want to do, you know, other big parts. And, and of course, the Northwest. I love, I just, you know what? Too little time, too many paintings to do. <laughs> that's, well, that's really great that you have this excitement about yeah. it and that you haven't lost that or no. that it just, it keeps yeah. inspiring you to make, to visit new places. And, yeah. and, and do they typically, um, are mostly mountain type no, of no. scenes? There, there, there's some, Oh, Ocean, no. I oceans, rivers, and sky. I, I, I think some of my biggest collectors are <laughs> fly fishermen. They just love my river painting series. You know, I, I have this sort of weird following. That I'm a fly fisherman too. So. Cool. So that helps. And uh, um, I've done just sometimes I just do landscapes of trees. You know, I've done a little bit of everything. I had a guy who, I, you know, somebody said I read this thing about you on Google. I'm like, I don't Google myself, but. I, I'm like, what? I went and looked at it. The guy said he couldn't paint trees. And I like, he goes, I like your landscapes, but I don't think she lends herself to trees. And I was like, I can paint a tree. So I went out and painted some trees. <laughs> My trees are totally not like, you know, trees. And that's a big thing when you have a painting with trees in it. I feel like Bob Ross right now talking. <laughs> I'm not Bob Ross in it. But you know, sometimes a tree is like, I'm doing this very abstract thing. I'm like, hey. But how do I make that tree fit in this painting, you know? I'm just because of the figure ground right quality to it? Or well, it's just, such a different it just uh, a, shapes and... Just my brain has an idea of what a tree looks like, but my paintings do not lend themselves to that tree, you know? So I've got to figure out what that looks like. And, and so I, sometimes it's like the worst thing I have to do is like, I have to put trees on my painting. And then I go, oh, you did that. That was pretty cool. It was very abstract. I pulled that off, you know? <laughs> sure. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm sure you could pull it off. There's. Yeah, yeah. You're very talented. Thanks. Um. Yeah. So you said scale usually because I think I saw a show at Woodside a few years ago and they were much bigger. Mm -hmm. What's the largest size you get to? Well, I, because I paint on wood, I'm a little bit limited. You know, to the size of a piece of plywood or four by eight. Yeah. Yeah. I um. I think it is a four by eight or four by seven and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that painting's in um, the Four Seasons, actually. Downtown? Yeah, it's in the private residence. Fancy people. And, yeah. and do you have a, how does your, you know, some people have really, you know, modest studios, some people have really fancy studios, some people really enjoy light, mm -hmm. ambient light. Um, I kind of like electric light. I don't know why. I, I just, I like controlled light. Yeah. And I, I, I'm not really that particular on the light yeah. that I have. I'm a little more like you in that aspect. I, my studio is actually in the basement of my house. Okay. So um, it was an afterthought. <laughs> we built our house. We literally, we literally built our house. So, um, you know, it's not finished. <laughs> we won't be finished with ourselves today. But um, it's a lovely house. And we built the basement because at the time it made sense to put another, you know, story on top of the, you know, the footprint it was cheaper to do it right then and there. We sure. wanted a view, which we got a little view, but not much of a view. Um, we're inside, we're on Maristone, we're on the middle of the island, so we're not in the water or anything like that. But, um, yeah, the basement was open and it was supposed to just make a room. Like, I think I'll be taking that over to my room now. But there's not a lot, of, it's a pretty dark tunnel and then the front is lit. So I end up usually pulling the shades and putting lights up like you have it. Because I like to have light, like what's it going to look like in the studio, in the gallery, not 
you know, natural light's nice. And I do dry my work in natural light. I think that's really important. Okay. Because they say if you have light on your paintings, you know, they'll brighten your whites. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure I have, you know, density. And that's something I also think about in my paintings is density. That's from my old printmaking days, you know, that, that difference between the light and the dark. And how do you pump that? So when I do that last layer, sometimes I'm going through going, do I need to pump that painting up a little bit? Maybe it's the subtlest thing that nobody can see. Like maybe I put a little darker edge on and I, I bring it in more like a, a theater. You know what I mean? Where I kind of tighten up the painting and bring it in. And a frame always helps, of course, but, but I want to be able to do it with that frame. And is it always uh, the floating frame quality? Um, I just started making, you know, having those done. I like them, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. gallery lights a lot. Yeah. And are they, I mean, all the work is has a reference, has a, like, a landscape reference. Are some completely non-rep, or? Um, you know, just the last, here is it, yeah, maybe the last, like, 10, 12 years has just pretty much been landscape only. Um, when I did pastels, I had a little bit different uh, style of work. I did, um, my work was time, was more of a timeless issue. So I would, um, I grew up in the Skagit Valley, which if any of you know where that is, very farmland. And, and um, I, I would do these paintings of sloughs or farms or or just something simple, but a lot of times I would have some human component in it that didn't, you know, that looked like it fit there, but then you didn't really know when it was done, you know, so it might have been an old pickup truck or the farm or just something that was just there. I, I mean, pe people would come to me, this guy came to me one time and showed and said, um, I thought an older guy did this painting. <laughs> but I was like, I think that's a compliment, you know? So First you thought it was a man, which yeah. I don't, which is great. I really threw you off your tracks, you know. And you think I, you thought I was like 80, which is pretty cool. <laughs> right. So you, you, that strength, did he reference your gender by the strength of your painting? And yeah, you're kind of an old soul? I, or Yeah, I think so. An old soul or, yeah, who knows what he meant, but I liked it. <laughs> yeah, I've had that said. I've had people say strong, mm -hmm. that, that term. Um, I had a... I remember uh, uh, Woodside put one of my paintings on Facebook one time and somebody wrote this big thing about, he's a really great painter. <laughs> and I was like, that's kind of funny. That's just an assumption that I was a man, you know, because I think there's a lot of both qualities in my work, feminine and masculine. And I don't even know what that means. <laughs> yeah, I think that, I don't know. I think that's even fair to say, like, Oh, well, she's a woman, and you know, it's like saying, oh, Georgia Keith, she, she did, you know, they're trying to say there was some sexuality behind her painting. I'm like, no, I think she was just bold. I don't think she was necessarily trying to be right. that person. I think that's just how people wanted to read it. You know, the, my favorite thing to do at shows, at my own shows, I mean, I like doing it at other people's shows, too, <laughs> is I like, you know, you're standing there, and, and people are walking around looking at your work. And uh, sometimes they don't know you're the artist, you know, they're just right. locked in the door, right? And I'm standing there, and sometimes I'll hear people walk over and start talking about it. I'll be just standing here talking to somebody else, and somebody's talking about my work, and I, I like to hear what they say. Not because I'm, you know, not an ego thing. I, I love hearing them explain to the other person why I did something. <laughs> and I'm like, maybe, maybe I do that. <laughs> it's it's sort funny. of a window. It's interesting how Maybe people totally make these wrong. stories up. It can be completely wrong, but it's just really fun to hear it. You know, like I just love hearing people describe what they think I did and why I did it. And I'm like, that's so funny. Sometimes I'll go, hey, I'm an artist. Nice to meet you. And I'm like, oh, it's <laughs> pretty funny. Yeah. My favorite, I went to it when I had a pastel, I did a pastel show many, many, many years ago when I was first starting to show. It was a group show. And there were a bunch of ladies standing around. It was a pastel society thing. Sorry, pastel society. But they were standing around and they were like talking. I was drinking a glass of wine and they were talking about my pastel. And they're like, well, she didn't use any fixative. She didn't, I don't know how she did that. She can't put a piece in the show without a fixative on it. <laughs> I was just like listening the whole time, like, 
And they finally have, and then do their whole quandary. I'm like, actually, there's about seven post-it fixes on there. And they're like, whoa. And they're like, well, you, you can't, how'd you do that? How'd you get that effect? And they're like, funny. People just have an assumption of how you do something. Yeah, yeah I, I had a, yeah. someone thought that I, I, I got the resin really clear and they, they thought that it, there was one layer. Yeah. And I, I there was about 30 layers. Right. And I said, right. there's, I think there's probably 20 to 30 layers on it. And she didn't believe me. Yeah. Like she was like, you're lying, right? I'm like, yeah, no, well, it's, it's clear, you know, it's like, you can't see it. I mean, hopefully you can see the layering yeah. when I paint between the layers. Yeah. Um, but it is, it's fun how people kind of yeah. interpret things and well i think it's fantastic that your work may be outside of gender because it it yeah. does seem to have That's beautiful right. feminine qualities Thanks. but it's strong um i i it was that masculine or, or is that strong femininity no, was, i mean i, you know, I mean maybe, are we, maybe 25 30 years ago was. are we past that now <laughs> i would hope so i mean it's just a strong painting yeah. is a strong painting yeah. and it doesn't matter your race or your gender you or whatever, are you, a, yeah. you know, it's like your identity as are you, you know, you're a Caucasian painter are you or whatever. Are you or gay? Whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's Who still. Cares? Did you do good art? Was, was it, it? Was it? Yeah. Did it, did it make, you know, <laughs> did, it, did, did, it it, did it talk to yeah. yourself and the viewer? Yeah. And I, I think you're successful with, um, it, it seems to be the, the, the internal vision expresses out to the to the viewer yeah. and the final product so that that's a real success yeah you know and i to be honest with you i just paint because i like to paint you know i don't i mean I, as an artist we all like to make a living and, and have other people see our work but i i really want my work to just be the best it can be you know i i, I know my best painting hasn't even happened you know I'm, if, it ha if I think it has, I, I should just quit right now. You know, I should just, I'm just like, how can I do it? How can I get that effect? I'm, I just love geeking out on paint and just figuring out like, oh, when I use this particular, you know, green paint pigment, it doesn't mesh with this other pigment, you know, and, or I make a mistake. I'm like, that's a cool mistake. I got to remember how to mix that again or, you know, that sort of stuff. I think about the longevity of my work and I think it's really important I see a lot of people making work that's not archival in any sense. You know what I mean? Like they're just kind of throwing it together and like, oh, but what if it turns out to be really great and you want it? Somebody wants to keep it for a long time. You should think about the quality that you, you should just do everything to the top notch if you can, you know, do your best, you know? And um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled people buy my work. I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled people want to see my work, um, but I just, I have to do it no matter what. That's what I do. You do it for you. I do it for me. It's my thing. I, I have a hard time sending some of my paintings out because it's like sending your children out. You know? Right. You just spent a month with a painting intimately, like I said, for you know eight, ten hours. I mean, I don't do that every day. I probably do that every other day, though. You know, and and just to have that time with something. And to be honest with you, I'll get sometimes towards the end. I'm like, I can't look at you anymore. I'm so sick of you. I don't think you're very good, you know. And then I'll put it away, and then I might come back like I'm like, eh, it's okay. I'll send it to the gallery, and then I'll see it somewhere. And I'm like, oh, I really was rough on that painting. It was okay. It was actually, it's actually kind of nice how it aged, and and you know, it's just a funny thing. It's like a relationship. You know, you get sick of the, your boyfriend or your girlfriend. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, go on vacation. And that's where I feel with my paintings sometimes at the end of them. But, um, and then sometimes I just like, I love you. I don't want you to leave the house. But <laughs> I'm going to bye bye. Good life, good life. You know? Yeah, isn't it strange when so you, weird. you sell a painting and it, it disappears into the, into the void yeah. and it's in someone's house and then, you know, you'll get invited to their house and you see it, like, wow, that's something I did 30 years ago. Yeah, and it's you go, body it, it's like, wow, that painting. And, and you remember that time that you had. I, I love what you're saying yeah. about that intimacy of, of, of that relationship you have with that piece because you put uh, what I call psychic resonance yeah. into the piece. Definitely. And you're putting your hand and your eye and your mind and your energy into that and trying to mine it 
and sometimes it, it it's just ornery child that's just it's just like no I'm not gonna do what you want you yeah. know but it you you know you, sometimes you can tame it yeah but sometimes you can let it yeah. speak right and you know there'll, there'll be times I, I try to do a lot of different things and and it is fun when people say oh you didn't do that you know <laughs> they didn't they're like you you couldn't do that or you, that's not your style or whatever and I'm like just like, okay whatever but I mean I just you know, I, it, maybe it's schizophrenia or something, but I just yeah. like to do a I lot of that, things. Right. I, I keep, you know, because like you, I want to be excited. Yeah. You know, and I want the, you know, the folks that might buy the work to, you know, have that translate. That that when I did that piece, I was excited to do that kind of kind of work or that style or that scale or the it's colors. It's a piece of you. It really is. It is a piece of you. It's a, it's, that's why it's sort of weird that you give it to somebody else. You know, a stranger. I'm like, here, take a piece of me. Bye. Right. You know? And you're like hoping it went somewhere. Well. Like a good home, you know? Right. You know? I saw a painting of it. was like, you can do for sale on a this resale auction. You just, and I was like, oh. I actually thought about buying it back because it was weird. I didn't really care for the painting that much. It was like an old painting. I'm like, I can let it go. But, um, it was weird to see it. It's sort of like seeing your horse go to auction or something. <laughs> I gotta go save it. It's so stupid. That's great. I like how you're so possessive about. You're like, you know, wouldn't it be great? You never <laughs> sold anything. You just were like, no, it's. Oh, no, I had to buy another house just to put all the stuff in. <laughs> right. That's. I don't of... even know who owns most of my work. I mean, I really don't. Like I maybe know like thirty percent. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I just say you know where they go. I kind of don't like that. I wish I would. I wish I had the clout to, you know, know who who bought it. I think it's my fault. I mean, I don't think I, I've been in galleries. I've been in multiple galleries, and I didn't get a tracking on all of it. A lot of times they won't let me know. Like, and they'll say. You know, I sold a tower to somebody, and it's like some famous person, and they had to sign a non-disclosure yeah. form. Yeah, and so, is. and I don't, I don't get to know who, who bought it. I mean, that seems. I had to sign one for somebody, and I'm not lucky that he had it. I don't know. I don't like that. Don't use this photo because that person doesn't want anyone to know that they have my work. I have no idea what that's about. Yeah. I guess wealthy people are kind of funny sometimes. But yeah. thank God for them. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so I, I mean I'm happy I sold the piece yeah. and you know I, I could eat that next week yeah. or whatever, right? Yeah. So that's um, a whole other conversation. That was itself, that right? was real important. Um, or buy paint, or yeah. usually I buy paint before I buy food. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, especially those years when, you know, you're starting out, yeah. you know, and it was just you're just so uh, grateful that someone bought it and, oh, yeah. and you were able to do you remember the first painting you sold I don't I think I, that I don't think I do either kind of weird like I, I think I should know that be like my first kiss or something I don't think I remember that either might have been a spin the bottle thing I don't know <laughs> I don't even know but I, I really yeah it's weird it's like I should know that yeah well, I, yeah, I think I've, I've just been doing it so long and my memory is so bad and, you know, I might have been a little wilder when yeah, I was younger. I think I may be in college. I actually sold some stuff in college. So I don't, I don't remember, you know, but it, it is fun when you go to someone's house, an old friend or whatever, and you yeah. see like, oh, I remember that one or whatever. Or Have you ever been to someone's house and you're like, I forgot you owned that? Oh, yeah. Isn't that weird? Yeah. You're like, oh, that guy sold your painting. We just love it. And I'm like, oh, you have a paint? Oh, yeah. I'm I know, like, yeah, I love to have... What's wrong with my brain? Yeah, like... <laughs> <laughs> so memes are someone like, an, you know, a, a manager assistant taking yeah. care of that stuff. But yeah. sometimes you're just kind oh, of... God, wouldn't that be great? You know? I don't think people realize. I mean, they think they oh, you're a painter, you just paint all day. What a glamorous life you have. And it is. It is a glamorous life. I'm not... I mean, come on. I could have a totally different life. And I have. I, I And I've had jobs while I've been a painter, and I... Still do some work while I'm a painter. Um, that's a whole nother story. But, you know, because I like to eat. And, um, but there's that whole thing of, of 
having someone photograph your work and get the work to where it needs to go and document your work and do your website and do your social media work. It's just, it's a job, really, you know? So, it's hard. Well, you seem like you've kind of mastered it and it's really a pleasure to see someone that is self-actualized in, in, in that way. And um, I really appreciate you coming and spending yeah, this time yeah. with me. I, I adore your work, so. Thank you so much. Uh, it, it's, it, it, you're, you're, you're really uh, great to talk with. Thank and you. you're, you're very articulate and your approach is, is wonderful. So I'm, I'm looking forward to just seeing more of your oh, beautiful work. And I know you're always on it. doing more. Yeah, so thank you. thank you so much thank for coming. Thank you.